Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James, and in this video, let's talk about From Season 3, Episode 10, the finale episode. And it did give us some revelations as far as the title goes. I know Episode 9 didn't, but it did lead up to this episode, and there were some stuff revealed, and like I've said before, when they do reveal something, it seems like it makes you ask questions, so we still have tons of questions, but we did get some answered. So I'm going to try to break up my review in the different little sections of the show. I'll talk about Boyd, Fatima, and the Smiley Baby first, and then go into the other uh, character arcs that's happening. So in a big way, the town is still trying to break Boyd as far as what he did to Elgin and the visions that he sees of Father Katri. The town is also preying on the weakest like Elgin and Sarah saying, you know, you'll get out of here. You'll free the whole town if you do this. So all of that's playing out. Fatima's missing, of course. We know Elgin did it. He's listening to the angel that he thinks is an angel. But at the end of the last episode, of course, they're looking for Fatima. The town is. And some of them have returned, like Ellis and Elgin returned to Colony House. Donna had returned to Colony House, but Acosta was still out there somewhere. She said looking. So people were still looking and stuff. This is right after episode nine. Pretty much flows right into the other and Ellis definitely felt something about Elgin was off, so he tells Boyd, and they make a plan to go talk to him at Colony House. Kenny and Ellis sent not to let him leave, and so things start progressing from there. Boyd gets Sarah, because she's been through this before and might can talk to him. So all of this is playing out. Everybody's agreeing, because everybody loves Fatima and knows that this town will twist your mind like it did Sarah, and if something's bad about to happen... Maybe Elgin deserves a, you know, a few broke fingers and whatever uh, that may happen that Boyd's going to do. And we do see Fatima all this time. Her belly's gotten big. She breaks the jar. She's thinking about cutting the baby out, but the kimono lady's like, uh-uh, here it comes. It's, and, of course, all that's playing out while Boyd is torturing Elgin, trying to get information of where she is. Acosta shows up, and everything kind of goes a little bit awry because once they go down into the kitchen... Sarah goes up and takes out his eye. So that was a pretty crazy string of events that played out as it went. Poor Elgin, but man, Sarah, she knew because she had the voices talking to her. She knew how far she needed to go to get him to say it. And like she said, she didn't want Boyd to get completely broken like she already is. She's already lost her soul. The Polaroid of the house was a nice touch that the town did and how it knows all that stuff and, you know, all that kind of stuff is just crazy daisy. But it didn't phase Boyd too much. It, it's almost like it made him more mad, more determined to hurt Elgin to get that information out of him. But Sarah did it. You know, Elgin, will he live or will he die? I don't know. He was definitely alive the last time we saw him. But, you know, that's a pretty, pretty bad wound. And he's in, just in a bad spot because he listened and took Fatima and that he did all those things. I wonder if they'll blame Tilly's death on him. You know, will Tilly's death even be brought back up now that all this is happening? Smiley baby and all this kind of stuff. But the kimono lady brings out the pod from Fatima. Pa Fatima has the baby or baby monster, whatever it is, the pod, and takes it down into the hole, which does lead to the caves. And bam. We have a smiley. That brings up a question to me. Because of the end, if Miranda and Jade are past lives, had these past lives of people, Miranda and Christopher, and even further back, and further back they had a kid in the beginning, I guess, and was one of the people that sacrificed, or did people sacrifice kids farther along the way in the timeline? Because, you know, the way I understand what... Fatima said that the monsters were, they sacrificed their kids to gain immortality, which makes them evil people. You know, they're monsters. They were monsters as humans. And it seems like they're monsters now in eternity that can't die. Smiley came back. So the reincarnation thing. So I guess it worked them sacrificing the children and they're living forever. Smiley's a testament to that. But if Miranda and Jade sacrificed their kids, just like the monsters, why aren't Miranda and Jade monsters? So there's a lot of questions. Some of it kind of makes sense. Okay, fine. They revealed some stuff, but it also like, what? What? So it definitely opens up a whole new chapter almost going into season four with all of the stuff that was revealed, especially at the end with future Julie and stuff like that. But 
the smiley thing is pretty crazy. Um, the Tabitha reveal, definitely reincarnation. She was Miranda and her and Jade as their past lives. She was Miranda. He was Christopher Miranda and Christopher didn't have a kid. Their past lives passed behind that years before that. Probably at the very beginning, they were one of the first two, a couple that had a daughter that sacrificed her to live forever. They are getting reincarnated. They tried to stop it. Um, you know, there's still a lot of questions within all of that. Why are the monsters the monsters? Why are Jade and Tabitha what they are, you know, being reincarnated? So there's still a lot of questions, I'm just saying. So I'm going to move on to the Victor story arc with him and Henry and you know, Victor, man, being sad, sad, sad now that he learned that, you know, I guess it is true. He's the cause of his mother's death, but I don't think he should be blamed, but he blames himself for sure. And he tells Henry, he's like, I'm going to show you something. You're going to be mad at me and you're going to hate me, but I got to show you. And so he takes him to the top of a hill, how uh, young Victor got them up there. You know, that's a question, but they were in pieces he said Eloise was in pieces, and he said he thinks it's her. So it is a, still a possibility that Eloise is alive, but they also, the writers, could have just kept it vague that she is dead, and they could have kept it vague for the reason of us, you know, doing our theory thing, you know, a thing for the fans. But maybe she is really dead. But that option, I think, is still open for her to be alive. So this scene with Victor, it was a little on the emotional side as far as you know victor telling his dad that it was his fault that his mom died and him crying man the acting i love that dude he is killing it killing it playing victor i just gotta say but everything about the scene especially the part where he said now you don't have to be my dad anymore i know that may not hit home emotionally to everyone but being someone that didn't have a great relationship with his dad and that my dad's passed away it's that you can't go back, Bob. You can't fix it. It's too late to fix it now. That's probably TMI. But anyway, the Victor and his dad losing his mom, thinking he's the blame for it. The dad saying, I will always be your dad. I thought that was a great scene. So then we cut to Randall and his situation of hearing the cicadas in his head, the buzzing, and it's really driving him crazy to the point he was about to lobotomize himself. And he didn't care. He's like, I got to end it, you know, and good thing Marielle shows up and she's like, hey, 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 and tries to comfort him, you know, and say, I'm in, I'm, I'm in this too. And I'm in it with you and, and we can make this work. We can work it out together, hopefully. But Christy gets out of Marielle that no, she's not okay. And she doesn't think anybody is that's in the town. So, you know, Marielle's been quiet. We know that Randall has had some issues. We know the issues with Julie and, so Marielle, something's up, you know, I don't know what it almost seems like. I think I asked uh, Dana and Scarlet Fever over when I was uh, as a guest on their channel, we were talking about from and I said, do you think there's anybody else in town that's being talked to like Elgin and uh, Sarah and stuff like that about getting out of town? You know, you'll get everyone home if you do this and you know, they say that to Tabitha, so I think maybe that could be a ruse as well. They save the kids, and they still don't get to go home. It's just another ruse by the monsters. But could they be talking to Marielle, and she's just, maybe she's playing it out, and we don't see it, or we see it, and we didn't realize it until, you know, whatever happens, happens. Are they talking to Marielle? I don't know if they are. I think she's probably being tormented, just like Randall and um, Julie hears the screams. So I think it's some kind of torment probably, but it could be something where, you know, the voices or something wants her to do something. So now we'll go to Tabitha, Jade, and Jim. So that's a pretty big story that's unraveling throughout the episode. Tabitha, of course, is just coming back from hugging Victor and, and remembering or seeing or feeling, being really, Miranda and she realizes that and so she tries to talk to Jim and Jim goes and gets Jade brings Jade back and they're talking about it so that's a good thing you know we've all been bitching a little bit that people don't talk to each other well it happened they all talk to each other 
and eventually made it out to the truck where Jade is like screaming out, you got to give us more. You got to give us more. But it was Jim that figured out it was the music. And, you know, I was probably on Reddit, maybe even in season two, when someone said something of, that it could be music, you know, and I know there were leaks, a big F you to the a-holes who posted spoilers and stuff. We know who you are. It does seem like I heard some theories, some people came up that it was music notes way back before even we got spoilers. So kudos to whoever may have figured that out because that's what it was. Music notes, Jade, the song just happened to come to him. Once he figured it out, he plays the violin and the kids show up. Uh, And Cooey means remember. And as soon as it seems like that moment happened, Jade and Tabitha were flooded, like their memories opened up. Um, the door to their memories and they both knew jade knew that way in the past whoever he was you know originally and tabitha whoever she was originally were together and had a daughter and they sacrificed her but tabitha walks away and you realize jade is remembering and has remembered the things that Tabitha is telling Jim once he goes after her and stops her in the woods. He's like, tell me, I don't understand. And she's like, I am Miranda. Jade is was Christopher. And it goes back, whoever was before Christopher. And before that, and before that, and before that. And Miranda had someone before her, and someone before her. And if you go all the way back to the beginning, it was whoever I am, and whoever Jade is, we were a couple, we had a kid, and we sacrificed her, a daughter. So that's pretty deep. You know, that would be pretty deep if I was Jim also. And so he has to take a moment as well. Uh, Tabitha's like, I need some time, dude. And so he needs a moment as well. He walks from wherever he is over to where the RV wrecked. And he's taking a moment, a breather, you know. And that's when Julie screams out and comes after him. She's got short hair, different clothes. She looks different. She's a story walker. So that goes to the little part in the diner with Julie and Ethan and Ethan saying that she's a story walker and that's what she can do. She can't change past chapters, any event that happens in any chapter, but she can go and visit. So if she can't change anything physically, I wonder if she can change something just by saying dad or whoever she may go back to, hey, this is going to happen in the future and then disappear again you know i don't know how that works exactly but that's what we see julie do she's from the future and she shows up knowing hey maybe i can go back and save my dad she she knows that jim is dead that he died in that moment she's like i think it happened right around here right around this moment and so she was trying to go back and change it she said as much and he didn't understand why she looked different and what was happening he just knew the man in yellow shows up Yep, the guy from the painting in Miranda's basement. So I don't know how it works as far as the man in yellow, the boy in white, all the details. But we finally did get to see the man in yellow, the guy who seemingly was the voice on the radio, the voice on the phone, messing with Jim the whole time. But I guess Jim's time was up because the man in yellow rips his throat out right in front of Julie, who came from the future to see it happen, but maybe originally wasn't there. Like, she acted kind of like she wasn't there when it originally happened. But if you think about time travel and the whole paradox thing, she would have been there when it happened every time. You know, it's just, it's the time travel thing can mess with your mind really bad. But I'm going to stop rambling because it's more fun to talk to you guys in the comments and hear what you think about all the things that happened in this episode. And maybe even hear some theories for uh, season four. As far as any theories I may have at this moment, it doesn't look like the smiley baby is going to cause everyone to go home the way Julie looked. She had her hair cut and everything. It seemed like they've still been there for a little while. How does Tabitha deal with that? Ethan, man, I feel sorry for Ethan losing his dad. How will they deal with the Elgin situation? Uh, Fatima killing Tilly. Void seeing smiley reborn. Marielle saying, no, she's not all right. The man in yellow showing up. Victor used to trust the boy in white, but now he doesn't. So everything's changing. We got a whole new scheme kind of going forward almost uh, for season four. But you guys let me know what you think about this episode, of course, and any theories you might have for season four down in the comments below. 
and you know I'll join you there. This is James, and as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more dead stuff.